start on this computer. All right. Welcome, guys. Thank you so much for joining me for the um, natural skincare class. This, I mean, I titled it natural anti-aging skincare, but really it's general all-purpose tips and tricks in order to have healthy skin um, health and wellness. So we're going to carry on. And so a quick intro about myself. I am a holistic esthetician, um, a wellness advocate for doTERRA and just overall wellness striving person. I have been really interested in holistic healing and wellness since I was a child. Um, I actually taught myself reflexology when I was in middle school. Then I started teaching myself about chakras and meditation and just different types of energy work. And I just kept learning and learning and it eventually fell into place and made sense. Um, really only in the past four or five years, but it finally makes sense. I just used to say that I was a uh, Renaissance woman who knew a lot of little things about different topics. Now it all connects and makes sense. Um, I am licensed in the state of Massachusetts in um, natural skincare and spa therapy. I have got a certification in aromatherapy. Um, in that process of looking for the wellness thing that I needed to be doing. I got certified in equine massage as well as a form of energy work called Shambhala that's very similar to Reiki. Um, and basically I use all of these tools in order to help my um, customers and others just embrace their natural beauty um, and live the most natural possible life they can uh, for themselves, their families, their 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 loved ones, all of it. So on the side here, you can get all my ways to connect with me. The QR, it goes right to my link tree that has my blog, my website, all the things, um, ways to connect with me for a one-to-one, -one, everything. Now, when it comes to natural skincare as an esthetician, um, when I am looking at somebody's skin, the first thing I do is look at their skin and try to identify their skin type. So I'm going to touch it. I'm going to look at it. Um, so when I'm virtually consulting with somebody, I am going to look, I'm going to ask the questions that help me fi figure out what I would normally be touching. Um, but a normal skin type is not tight or oily. It's just basically perfect. Um, very few people have absolutely perfect, beautiful, normal, quote unquote, skin. Um, <laughs> we all tend to have some degree of dryness, oiliness, uh, combination. So when it's dry, you're going to feel that tightness and the pores actually look almost invisible. They're so dry and tight that they, you can't see them. Um, if there, it's an oily skin type, you're going to feel that oil. You're also going to see larger pores. Uh, and then if it's combination, typically the, one of the ones that everybody knows is kind of more oily in the T zone and then maybe drier or normal as off to the sides. So you're going to have those larger pores and then it's going to get smaller, more diminished. Um, when you have a normal skin type, it's just, the pores are just kind of, they're there, but not too big, but not too small, if that makes sense. <laughs> um, and then sensitive would be kind of like me. You've got a little bit of redness to the skin. Um, if I touch it, it starts to get redder. It flares up quickly and easily. Um, it gets irritated, is sensitive. Um, so that, and the combination type skin types, you can have any of these as a combination. So you could be sensitive and dry, oily and dry, um, any combination. Uh, then the next thing you're going to look at is what are the conditions going on with um, the person that you're looking at their skin? So is there um, wrinkles, age spots, um, you know, lines, acne, whatever the condition may be. So that appearance to the skin. And then um, one thing I want people to kind of remember is that your skin and how you age also is connected to your, um, your family history, your ethnicity, um, 
your heritage because a more oily like Italian or Greek person they've got oily skin that oil may be a problem when you're a teenager and you are are breaking out with acne but when you're older it's actually going to keep your skin healthier, happier, less wrinkles and fine lines. It's going to take longer for those to show up on the skin. Whereas I have that pale Irish sensitive dry skin. Like I literally have been dry since I was a baby. Um, so I bathe in oil. Um, but the dry skin type, you're going to see those uh, aging, the, the the wrinkles and fine lines a lot faster. So what we do to care for our skin will play a role, but um, there are certain things that um, either make, you, make it harder or easier for your um, aging process, uh, just based on our heritage. So just quickly looking at the um, our aging skin. So as we age, even starting in our 20s, we're going to start to see minor changes in our skin from aging. Um, that's when our collagen starts to slow down. The production of natural production of collagen slows down and any effects from the environment are going to start to take their toll. So you're going to see just a little bit less of... Um, support structurally. As we get into our 30s, the, the cells are going to start to um, break down a little bit more. You're going to see a little bit of fine lines on the surface of the skin and our, um, our collagen gets a little thinner. Everything just starts to go a little bit more. And as we get into our 40s, then it's even thinner. We're going to get those more defined fine lines. You're going to have a thinner um, barrier of the protective lipids that protect our skin, um, which means that we're going to lose hydration quick, uh, easier. And so you really have to protect your, um, your skin barrier. And, um, so aging starts to show more signs. You're going to see age spots. You're going to see that dullness because as we age, the, the cellular turnover slows down. And so then you you get a, that dullness in their skin. And 50 plus, um, you're really going to see actual wrinkles, the, the um, pigmentation spots from the sun, and um, dehydration is more of a concern because our skin is actually thinner. At this point, we've got less collagen, we've got less elastin, which is the support to our cells. That lipid barrier is much thinner. So you really, if you're doing literally nothing, this is the natural aging process as, but as if we are caring for our skin, we can change that and we can um, have a little bit more control over our skin health. There are also environmental things that play a major role in our skin health and how we age. So whether lack of sleep, poor diet, uh, the, the lack of hydration, exercise, whether you gain weight or lose weight, it's a major effect on our skin health, actually. Um, you know, some people, they especially if they do the roller coaster thing, if they gain and then they lose and then they gain and then they lose, it's it like sinks their skin. It makes it more saggy. It's just a challenge. Um, regular poor skin care. If you're not taking care of your skin, you're going to age um quicker than somebody who does care for their skin. And then there's the the free radical damage from the sun, air pollution, toxin exposure, um, stress and inflammation in our body. And um, of course, if you smoke or um, drink too much, those play a role as well. And then just a slower cellular metabolism. So taking care of our health and wellness from the inside out and um, controlling as many of these external factors can really affect our health and wellness. And, and some of it may seem hard, but some of it isn't. <laughs> um, so first off, in general, everybody probably knows they should have some skin habits, uh, skincare habits. Uh, this is my recommended. I do personalize for certain people because everybody's got there's the reality of what can we really do? If you're the type of person who has literally done nothing for your skin, doing 
a cleanse, a toner, and a serum or a moisturizer might seem four or five steps might seem like chaos and too much. So um, we can always personalize it, but you basically every day should be cleansing your face. Um, one reason that you want to do it morning and night is because um, in the morning you want to wash off, you know, any anything from just, you know, some of us drool in our sleep, some of us like, you know, you're rubbing up against a pillowcase, you you might be cuddling into your husband's armpit, who knows, I don't know. Um, <laughs> but there, you still want to cleanse your face. Plus, it's just the first thing in the morning, cleanse it just gets you a little awake and alive. Um, but in the evening, you want to do it because you want to wash off the toxins from the environmental toxins from out in the world, whether it's pollen or air pollution or um, car exhaust, all of it needs to be washed off. Um, we don't want those toxins laying on us any longer than they have to. Um, and, and also at the end of the day, you may have been sweating or um, you might have had sunscreen on or whatever, you need to wash it off. Uh, the next thing is toner. So toner is particularly key if you are an acneic skin type or if you're using a cleanser that really shifts your pH because um, toner is going to balance your pH. And if you um, don't balance your pH, your skin barrier is unprotected and bacteria could get in there. And so it could really affect the um, immunity health of your skin. And then the serums are going to help boost your skin health. They're basically like vitamins, nutrients, food for your skin. Um, when I make them, they tend to be very um, beneficial on a cellular level. That So they get much deeper than some of the ones that you get in the store. And then a moisturizer is key for locking in that hydration. Um, I think something you will notice is my theme is just kind of nourishing is key to your skin's health and wellness. So just nourish, nourish, nourish. Now we do have to get into some of the heavy stuff as to why I lean so hard on natural solutions. So um, when it comes to skincare and personal care products, honestly, there are so many personal care products that are loaded with toxic chemicals. Um, the environmental working group did a study and they looked at the personal care products that we use. And on average, most women use about 15 to 20 personal care products that in first thing in the morning. So that includes everything from your soap, your shampoo, your makeup, your deodorant, your perfume, whatever you wear, put on, you know, style your hair with. We've put about, um, 168 chemicals on our bodies before we even leave the house. Um, men use slightly less personal care products. So they put about 85 and teenagers about 60. Um, the other thing is if you're a mom or if you plan to be a mom, our personal care products, uh, they actually get into our bodies and they, those chemicals get into our bodies and stay there. And they've, they've tested uh, in biblical cord blood of babies after they've been born and found 287 chemicals, uh, toxins in their blood that came from mom's personal care products. So what you put on your skin doesn't just affect you. It affects your children. Uh, and when they did a study looking at those chemicals uh, that were in teens' blood and urine, uh, they also found that there were 16 hormone-altering chemicals that were from endocrine disruptors that are like parabens, phthalates, and um, trisicans. And the parabens and phthalates, I'm sure all of you have seen those words on labels like paraben-free shampoo. Well, there's a reason. These our hormone uh, disruptors. So they affect our hormones and the way our bodies work. So they're, they're going to affect fertility. They're going to affect birth weights, birth um, defects. They could cause cancer. They can cause allergies, sensitivities, um, issues with our nervous system, and even just developmental changes. So 
you know, if you're a teenager is using products that are disrupting their body and how their body develops, it's going to absolutely wreak havoc on their overall health and wellness. Um, so this one, and they found that the methylparaben and the um, propylparabens were in every single person that was in part of this study. So there are so many chemicals in our day-to-day -day products. Um, I love this image because the woman with all these little dots on her, like showing what products you might use, your lipstick, your, your um, nail polish, eyeshadow, shampoo, what possible chemicals are in there and the side effects. And um, some of them are pretty terrible. Fertility issues, um, cancer causing, linked to cancer causing issues, um, of course, allergies and um, hormonal issues. So it doesn't just affect our skin. It goes much deeper and it affects our whole body's health. Um, some of the big ones. So the phthalates, which they were talking about, which are found in nail care products and um, fragrances, those chemicals can cause genetic mutations and they can reduce uh, sperm count. So not so great. Uh, the parabens are a preservative in so many cosmetics. Um, like I said, hormone disruptor, uh, known to cause male reproductive function problems. Um, and then uh, a couple others, the sodium lauryl sulfates. You'll find this in most sh soaps, shampoos, um, conditioners, things like that. It's what causes that like foaming action in uh, soaps. They are known ca uh, carcinogen. They affect our nervous system and they affect human development. Uh, they also are high irritants for uh, allergies. So major issues um, that I think a lot of people don't even know about. And this is why I do what I do. Um, and then the other big one is that natural isn't always natural. I think many people are starting to catch on. Uh, but a lot of these brands um, that lean towards showing a more natural thing uh, many of them contain this chemical. It's toxic chemical 1,4-dioxane. That is actually a byproduct of um, something that they do to the sulfur, sul sorry, <laughs> sodium lauryl sulfates in order to make them less abrasive and let and also enhance that foaming action. And it actually is a huge risk to irritants. It's a known carcinogen. And it's in about 40% of the products that call themselves natural. So for me, I try to avoid most things that just say sodium lauryl sulfates because you don't know how they dealt with it. And the FDA encourages people to manufacturers to remove that chemical, that byproduct, but it's not a law. So they don't have to. Um, and as you can see, it's in a lot of baby products, baby care products. It's in body firming products. It's in anti-aging lotions, eye creams. So again, just being really careful about what you do and, um, and what you do use and how it could affect our bodies. But <laughs> I, there is happy news here. Um, one of the really cool studies that, um, that environmental working group did is they looked at they asked those teenagers, those teenagers that had been, um, they tested their blood in their urine and found all those parabens in there and, and whatnot. They said, just look at your products. Go. We did, they did a study. They said, go switch your products. Go look at the label and read the label. If it says paraben-free, um, sulfate-free, phthalate-free, buy that, switch, switch to it. Within days of switching their products, the levels of parabens in their body decreased by 44%. The phthalates decreased every, you know, so if you switch your products, it will change your health. It's not like a forever you're screwed. Um, so that is really awesome and a great takeaway. And one thing I do love as a resource, not necessarily to rely heavily on is the environmental working group skin deep page, because you can look up your products that you're using 
And they literally go through every single ingredient and they rate it with this off to the side here. You can see the hazard score and there's a green box that says zero to two, low hazard, um, the middle and then the high hazard. But it explains why they rate it this way. And um, and so you can go in there and feel for yourself like, do I feel comfortable using this product or should I switch or, you know, discover what it is that is the concern about the products so that you are in control of your personal health. Um, now, personally, I love to make a lot of my own skincare products. I have a few lines that I love to use that I know are completely clean, but I also make a lot of my products using essential oils. So we're going to talk a lot about that um, and how you can use oils to care for your skin. First off, um, if you know that they're 100% pure, they are natural and safe. Um, they have so many different properties to them. And the one thing I found with essential oils is that they really flip the script when it comes to skincare because as an esthetician, most skincare lines, you you probably know yourselves, you walk into a store and look at, at skincare lines, you've got your oily skin, your sensitive skin, your normal skin, your anti-aging skincare line. When it comes to oils, they can do so much. So if I just think of lavender, well, lavender is healing, it's soothing, it's calming. Um, so I could use lavender to deal with acne to calm the inflammation and to heal it, but I can also use it for a more sensitive skin type to calm and soothe the redness of that sensitivity. Um, and then something like frankincense is very calming, soothing, healing, and also it on a cellular level, it's healing and repairing. So that takes it up a notch and gives you that anti-aging element of repairing damaged cells. Um, so that's just blows your mind with those two oils. I could treat every type of skin problem. <laughs> <laughs> now they're not necessarily the go-tos for everything, but they make life a lot easier. Um, and so you can, you can do a lot just with a few oils. Um, there is the importance of talking about quality of essential oils, Honestly, about 80% of the oils on the marketplace are adulterated at this point. Um, up in yellow, that Consumer Advocates website, great article about this. A third-party lab literally ordered 10 or 11 different brands of essential oils, tested them on their own. They ordered them directly from the, the, from the producer, tested them, and... Of the 11 brands that they tested for like lavender, lemon, and peppermint, I think it was, um, only three of the brands were 100% pure, no synthetics, no adulteration of any kind. Um, the thing is, essential oils are very expensive. There's a lot of money to be made there. And um, if if you can extend an oil with maybe a lesser oil or an oil that is literally made in a lab, a lot of people will do that because they can and it'll allow them to make more money and they're okay with that. I personally am very glad to align with doTERRA, which is one of the few companies that does not do this at all. They ensure that their oils are pure and they test them they third party test before they even purchase their oils, but then they also um, test them repeatedly before they go out the door to ensure that nothing ever happens along the lines. Um, because if you're taking a lesser oil, it's not going to work the way we want it to. And if it has synthetics in it that are lab created chemicals, they're definitely not going to work the way we want them to. And they're not going to heal the way they should. And they could potentially make you sick. When it comes to oils, they are very powerful plant medicine. They are 50 to 70 times more powerful than their herb counterparts. So um, less is more. That is the biggest thing. You want to make sure you dilute them with a carrier oil. Um, some oils you can put on your skin straight, like a lavender is safe to put on pure and neat. But I honestly t tell people, just use a carrier oil. It's going to make it go further. You don't have to worry about having a problem. And it's um, really going to help you um, 
help that oil stay in your body a little bit longer. But the oils, essential oils, they um, they literally within 30 seconds of being applied to the skin, they get into your blood, they travel wherever they need to go, they will work on a cellular level healing your body, and then they diminish out of your body within about two hours. So you don't have to worry about overdosing on your oils. <laughs> um, and then there is sensitivity. So like allergies still hold true. And certain oils like oregano is a hot oil. So if you don't dilute oregano oil, it could literally burn your skin. So you just have to be careful. And that, again, is one of the beauties of having somebody like myself to work with. We can educate and help you and guide you along the way. As an esthetician, um, one of the coolest things about caring for our skin is, and a holistic esthetician is to really think about our whole health. So when I look at somebody's skin, let's say you've got a, a breakout or some irritation going on, inflammation going on. I'm going to look at your face and where it's breaking out and figure out it could just be something specifically topically happening in that spot, but it could also be related to your diet, your sleep, your uh, circulation, all sorts of different things, allergies. So as you can see with this face mapping, there's a lot of specifics that can um, be connected because all of our, just on, on our face, just like in reflexology with the pressure points, all of our different areas of our face are connected to different body parts, which help us kind of clue us into what could be playing a greater role in our skin health. The other thing that we must think about is that healthy skin really requires whole health. Um, so we have to manage our stress, our sleep, our diet, um, just take proper care of ourselves um, as a whole self. You can't just apply a magic cream and hope that you're going to be magnificently beautiful. Like maybe there is a magic cream that can do that, but it's much better to care for yourself as a whole person. Um, so, you know, when you work with me, we really dig deeper into all of these elements. Uh, I'm going to like breeze the surface <laughs> with the rest of the class. But, um, you know, when it comes to increasing our water intake, that is going to flush our body um, and detoxify, but also nourish it. And if you add a drop of lemon oil, that really helps with that gentle detoxification um, and actually also helps manage your stress. So it's pretty cool. There's a very cool study about that. Um, proper nutrition. So we want to boost up on eating more fruits, vegetables, healthy proteins, and less of that processed foods because um, we want to reduce that inflammation in our body and inflammation is the root of all disease. So we really want to support our bodies on a cellular level with nutrition. Uh, it's going to increase our energy and increase our cellular health. So when you have healthy cellular renewal, you're going to have more of a youthful glow uh, from the inside out. And then it also helps with pain management as well. When we are eating well and caring for ourselves, you feel better. Um, stress management. So um, stress can really take a toll on our skin health and our overall appearance. It you know, can make our skin and our hair dry, our nails brittle. Um, acne can pop up because our hormones get a little wacky because of the stress. Um, it absolutely, there's a huge connection of stress and, you know, mind body connection with our gut health. Um, so that then makes it harder for our nutrients to be absorbed. You could be eating really healthy, but if you're not managing your stress, it's not going to get absorbed. So we have to, it's all connected and we have to care about every element. Um, and then if we're not taking care of our stress and managing our stress. Sometimes it makes it really hard to sleep because our brains are still going. So um, sleep being the next one, that is our time for our cellular renewal. And if we don't allow ourselves that time, you know, our collagen and elastin is going to start breaking down even faster. Um, our skin tone is going to reduce. And in all honesty, just that regular health and wellness of our bodies is going to start to deteriorate. So having a great bedtime routine is very key. And as we already talked about that toxic load thing of 
the chemicals that we might be using on our body, as well as those external chemicals play a role in how we age. So we want to make sure that we are reducing that toxic load as much as we can with the nat with the things we can control. And uh, so I'm going to share some of my favorite secrets of just how to care for our skin. So one of my favorites, this is my absolute game changer for everyone's skin is a pre-wash oil. Um, a pre-wash oil is basically, you could honestly just use some olive oil from your kitchen, some, you know, extra virgin olive oil, or even uh, coconut oil, if you have it, um, the raw coconut oil that you cook with. Uh, you just want to use a little bit of the carrier oil. You could add a couple drops of lavender or some frankincense or what you have. We can talk about it. Um, but I love a little lavender, a little frankincense with a um, olive oil and massage it in. It's going to loosen up the dirt and debris in your pores. Um, makeup, this could be a perfect makeup remover. You could literally just use olive oil if you wear a lot of heavy eye makeup. Um, you know, get all of that off of yourself with all natural products. And then you're, but it, it loosens the dirt and debris, but then it also nourishes your skin. So when you wash this off, it's going to leave your skin soft and supple. Um, it's a game changer for all skin types. So uh, I have a lot of oily skin people who are like, I can't put oil on my skin. No, please do. Because it's going to loosen up that natural sebum that's getting all clogged and blocked. And it's going to loosen that up, get the gunk out of your pores. Uh, it's also going to calm and soothe, especially if it's got that lavender or that frankincense in there, right? It's going to calm those irritations. Um, and you just massage it in and then go straight into your cleanser and then wash it all off. And your skin is so much softer. And then I have clients who have like eczema, rosacea, things like that. They use it and their skin shifts just in one wash. It's amazing. It's, it's, it's my powerhouse secret that I'm sharing with you guys. <laughs> um, as an esthetician, I love carrier oils. Um, there are so many different carrier oils. So long as it's a nice natural oil, um, they all have healing benefits to our, for our bodies. Um, these are just a few of my favorites. Jojoba is the closest to our natural skin sebum. So it's going to easily, um, absorb into our skin with no problems. It's what most massage therapists use because it's, it's, very few, I don't know a single person who has an allergy to it. It's, it's not a nut, you know, so it's good. Um, and it's very gentle, fast absorbing. Sweet almond oil is amazing. It helps brighten the skin. It's full of nutrients. Um, and it's very nourishing for the skin and you can use it on your hair as well. Um, evening primrose oil is very, um, very rich. So you usually want to blend this with something else, but it's going to help with um, more of a mature skin or something like an um, eczema or rosacea type skin because it's going to um, really help boost the cell structure and the elasticity of the skin, reducing those wrinkles and fine lines and dryness. So that's a really, really powerful one, but you do want to mix it with something because it can be very thick and slow to absorb into the skin. Um, you can also take evening primrose oil uh, internally as like a little supplement. Um, olive oil, like I said, I love olive oil. You think of all those Mediterranean goddesses and, you know, they're, if you go to Italy or Greece, all their products are made of olive oil and it's just wonderful. It has natural antioxidants. It's um, so full of nutrients and just beautiful. It is a little slower to absorb. So um, if you're in a hot climate, that might be a little harder to deal with if you don't like having that layer of oil on your skin for a little while. But depending on what your skin type is, it might just suck it right in. Um, argon oil is amazing for everyone. It is um, wonderful for a dry, sensitive, it's gentle enough for a baby, but it also is great for healing like an acne type skin. So it's very soothing, healing, hydrating, brightening, and um, it's great for hair and skin. So I love it. I, I sometimes use it as my styling oil for my hair, for my curls. 
Um, but I also love it for my skin. And then raw coconut oil actually is really incredible because it has these medium chain fatty acids that actually help um, promote, like they have antimicrobial, antibacterial benefits. So wonderful for more um, irritated, sensitive skins. So uh, an eczema type skin, it can help really heal up that, those irritations and calm and soothe and repair the skin cells. So those are just a few of my favorite oils. Um, exfoliation is key to uh, really getting rid of those built up dead skin cells because we are always building up our dead skin cells and you got to slough them off. Um, but there is, a, you got to be mindful of it. You don't want to be doing it every single day. People who over exfoliate, it causes your skin to actually produce more oil. So if you are an oily skin type and you're exfoliating every day, you're going to end up with more breakouts. But it also, if you're more sensitive like myself, it could increase the irritation and the um, and could actually cause more of a dermatitis um, or rosacea issue. So you just have to be careful. Most people I'd say once a week is all you really need. Some people need maybe twice a week, but too much is, it, <laughs> there is such a thing as too much of good things sometimes. <laughs> um, but it does help boost our circulation and reduce those fine lines and wrinkles and just um, brighten the appearance of your skin. So a couple of ways to do it manually. I love the manual brushes. So like these little silicone scrubbers at the bottom, I have one of those that I keep in the shower. You can just kind of like rub it real fast, super easy, very gentle. Um, the manual brushes, uh, the little wood one, wood handle one are really nice um, to really get into your pores and clean it out. The Sonic brushes that everybody loved a few years ago, First off, a lot of people use them almost every day, so it, it became too much, which I think is why you don't see them as much, um, but they also can be too much for a sensitive skin. So if you're more of that acne skin type, it's good, but once a week. <laughs> um, and then, of course, you could use masks or scrubs. So whenever you come see an esthetician, you're going to get... Um, they're going to use some sort of exfoliating mask on you as the first part of your facial. Um, and there's all sorts of different types of exfoliants, uh, glycolic acids, lactic acids, um, the BHAs, the beta hydroxy acids. And those we're going to pick and choose based on your skin type and your skin needs. So uh, as well as sensitivities, as you can see, glycolic acid comes from sugar, lactic acid comes from milk. So we've all know about Cleopatra and her milk baths. She was gently exfoliating her skin with those milk baths. So, you know, genius back then. Um, and then malolactic comes from apples. So there's all sorts of different um, ingredients we can use, natural ingredients to gently exfoliate our skin. I wanted to share my coffee scrub, sugar scrub that I personally like it more as a body um, scrub, but you could use it on your face. You just have to be incredibly gentle. Please don't be like my mother who likes to abrasively scrub everything really horribly. Don't do that. Be gentle. <laughs> Very small, gentle circles is what you want to do. Um, but it's uh, the coffee is wonderful for brightening our skin um, and protecting our skin, actually. So um, it also, the caffeine from it, de it helps with, um, depuffing the circles. So you could even, um, really grind it up a good bit in your coffee grinder, make almost like an espresso type <laughs> coffee. And so it's very fine. And that would be, you, you could use that on your face, but you know, a, co a typical coffee grind, uh, one suggestion is to use those grinds right after they've been, um, used in your coffee maker because you want them to have soaked for a bit so they get a little softer, but you still, it's it's a little abrasive, but this is a nice recipe, uh, great for the whole body. And then you just rinse off after you've done it. Um, and then this is my recipe for an exfoliating lip scrub. Very simple, very easy. You can whip it together in seconds. It's just a little brown sugar, some olive oil. You can throw in some essential oils if you want. And because our lips are one of the first places we see our dehydration and then you're dry and and it feels like nothing can fix it, right? No, no amount of lip gloss can fix it. Uh, so just using a little scrub can really shift things and um, it 
gives you that more <laughs> youthful appearance. And you can also go over the lip line, you know, so into this upper lip area and the lower lip area. Because if you drink liquids out of a straw, you're going to get those fine lines and wrinkles. Like we used to call them smokers lines because that's what people did a lot of. Now it's straws. <laughs> so, um, you know, this is a great thing to help kind of prevent those fine lines and wrinkles that a lot of people are actually very um, concerned about. And then finishing masks. So if you go to a spa and get a facial, they're going to do an exfoliating mask, then they're going to do a finishing mask, something that's going to nourish and hydrate and brighten and treat whatever your skin concern is. A lot of them are made with clays. So um, different clays help with different um, skin type issues. Um, some of my favorites, my absolute favorite is French green clay because it's it's kind of like a general one. It, it helps everybody's skin. It feeds a lot of nutrients into the skin, tightens, tones, purifies, um, but it's not overly drying. Whereas like kaolin and bentonite clay can be too much for most people unless you're an oily acne skin type and then rose clay is the most gentle of all the clays really calm and soothing um, but still pull out some impurities <clears throat> when it comes to essential oils there's so many oils that can brighten and balance and that's one of the biggest things as we get into wanting to have anti-aging bright glowing skin um that's something we want, we care about. So uh, this list here of essential oils are literally some of my absolute favorites, as well as the carrier oils that you could use that are really anti-aging. Um, I absolutely love like yarrow palm and blue tansy are probably two of my absolute favorite oils for that brightening, balancing of the skin. And if you really have a lot of pigmentation issues, the dark spots, this uh, recipe in the star here, the evening brightening mask. It's olive oil, yogurt, honey, and then lemon. So the olive oil is going to be, it's brightening on its own, uh, as well as nourishing and feeding the skin. The yogurt is a lactic acid, so it's going to be gently exfoliating. The honey is a natural humectant, so that's going to bring moisture to your skin or hydration to your skin. And then the lemon essential oil is that br brightening counterpart. And, um, you want to do this at night though, because the lemon essential oil can make your skin a little sensitive to the sunlight. So if you do it at night and then go to bed, you know, wash it off and then go to bed, you will have about 12 hours before the sun comes up again and you'll be good to go. You can go out into the skin without worrying about sensitivity. But if you were to put lemon oil on your skin and then go out in the sun, um, you, you might get a little extra burnt. <laughs> Um, and that, these are two of my absolute wonderful, um, hydrating, nourishing masks that are really easy to make. Again, it's literally just yogurt, honey, some oils. And then for the first one, it's the French green clay. The second one, it's a little cocoa and oatmeal. Um, so really feeding, nourishing, calming, soothing the skin, um, the green clay is literally my miracle mask. It helps everybody's skin, makes everybody happy, um, pulls out impurities, balances, calms, soothes, makes your skin feel so soft. And then the hydrating chocolate mask is just kind of like rich and elegant and makes you feel like you want to eat your face, but it doesn't taste good. So don't. Um <laughs> but it's full of antioxidants. It's a wonderful treat for your skin, very calming and soothing and hydrating. So real fast, just as we were talking about all the different steps that lead to proper care for our skin, um, we definitely want to think about nutrition. Um, this is another class altogether, but you know, most of us do not consume the, the amounts of daily recommended that we should of greens, of fruits, of fiber. You know, we only 3% of people actually take the minimal recommended dose of fiber. Um, and we are a nation that we are 5% of the world's population, but we consume 75% of the prescription drugs. And disease is just growing faster and faster. If we can use 
nutrition and cellular health and wellness and natural living to improve these things. Why wouldn't we? <laughs> you know, so that's why I'm here to help you guys. Um, again, this is another whole class, but there's so much that we can do with it. And there's ways that um, with supplementation and oils and then additional like how we eat, we can really shift our health and wellness. Uh, and it will, it will affect your skin health because you'll be healthier from the inside out. Um, again, proper sleep is so key to our body's ability to repair and heal. So, um, we absolutely want to have a, a good sleep routine. Uh, it really affects our mental health. There's um, connections between our mental health and our behavior. So um, if we take control of this, we're affecting our overall, how we present in the world, how we are in the world. And in my heart, like it's not just about appearing healthy and beautiful, right? You want to be naturally beautiful from the inside out and starting with proper care of sleep is going to affect so many other elements. Um, some of my little rituals, I like to use uh, the Copaiba oil. Um, they make a little soft gel that you can take internally. It helps just kind of relax and soothe our body. It, it reduces pain and helps with anxiety. It works in our body similar to CBD. Um, so I like to use, a, take a, a little bit of that before, uh, about 30 minutes before I really think it's about bedtime, especially if it's one of those days where your shoulders are up to your ears and you're just like, I can't calm down and relax. That's, I'm definitely going to do that. Um, and then I'll start diffusing. I kind of have a ritual being a mom. It's like, get his room going. And then my husband and mine's room going. And then I tend to stay up a little later, but I'll put the diffuser in the living room going too. And they all have like a calming, soothing blend going that will help us just get into relaxation mode. Um, and then that relaxation time, maybe we meditate, maybe we have a cup of tea and, and journal and think about like how, what, what happened today that we liked? Um, maybe read a story. Um, so trying to limit those screens as it gets closer to bed because it reflects our brains. Um, Believe me, I'm no saint. I watch a lot of Netflix sometimes. It it happens. It's okay. Um, <laughs> we can't be perfect 100%. Um, then when it comes to going into the bed and if you need a little extra, if you're still not quite at that, like I could just fall asleep right now, um, you could take, say, lavender in a spray bottle and spritz your sheets um, or you could apply a little bit to the bottoms of your feet. And I like to apply it to my chest here because then I can smell it as I'm laying down and it helps my whole body just relax and calm down. Um, even the pulse points. So your wrists, the back of your neck, um, really helps. And then there's certain oils. So if I'm still feeling tension in my body, the deep blue or the copaiba or the aroma touch really help relax the muscles. Cause you know, sometimes you lay down and you're like, Oh my God, I didn't even know that hurt. And you just rub a little oil and you're good. Um, and also I will do some immune supporting oil so that when your body's repairing itself, you're keeping your immune strong. Um, yeah, that's an important thing as well. Um, and then again, the stress management thing, um, it really stress affects our whole bodies. So it's affecting our brain, our cardiovascular, our joints, our immune, our gut, our reproductive health and our skin. So the more we can do to calm and soothe our bodies, the better. Um, so breath work, um, meditation, exercise, honestly, so many people, forget how much exercise really affects our stress levels. So whether that's taking a walk or if you're an intense exerciser, like going for a run, um, <laughs> but playing with our pets, um, seeing our friends. I know um, for me, our networking group, the, the Polka Dot Powerhouse, that those are my sisters. And when I connect with them, I feel more balanced and in alignment. Um, going for walks in nature or 
um, just getting proper rest, whatever it is that really helps you balance and um, recalibrate. It's very important that you prioritize that time so that you have it for yourself. Um, this slide, I just really wanted to share this one. This is Keely. She uh, is someone I know who is also a wellness advocate. And she had basically a very dangerous spot removed from her face, from her lip line there. And you can see her before and after photos. And what she did is she used a bunch of oils. But she, so she used the Immortel blend, the Yarrow Palm, Magnolia, and Rose Touch. But she also, and she created a custom blend, but she also took turmeric, copaiba, frankincense, Yarrow Palm, pink pepper, and the uh, Lifelong Vitality, which is our regular um, supplement for regular vitamins, and the DDR Prime, which is a specific blend that's called um, DDR. Um, is a cellular renewal blend and the probiotics and terazyme digestive enzymes every day. I'm blown away by this because within 11 days, that scar is completely gone. Um, if anybody knows anyone who's had scars like that, they typically don't heal that quickly. So what you do on the inside as well as externally makes a huge difference. Um, so I just thought that that was a huge example of why and what I do. <laughs> uh, so again, just kind of review. So we, in order to have our glowing, healthy skin, we, we want to drink more water, support ourselves with nutrition, get that proper sleep, the exercise, the stress uh, management, and then have that proper care for our skin. Um, natural chemical free products are so important um just to our overall health and wellness and um and then those little habits once once a week exfoliating and feeding our skin with those masks and those of you who have gone for facials know that massage is something key that when we do a facial yeah there are many massage techniques that in other classes we can talk more about this that there are ones that you can do at home that really support the anti-aging benefits. So some benefits of working with a holistic esthetician is that I can absolutely provide professional expertise and care that is customized to you. Um, I will help you identify and then address your concerns. And it can be so much more than just the topical concerns. We can dig deep because we're going to dig deep. We're going to dig and find out what's what's really causing your concerns, and um, and just a, seeking the guidance of a professional with your skin issues and concerns is absolutely the best. You don't want to be like Doctor Google, right? <laughs> Doctor Google always tells you you're dying of cancer. Well, Doctor Google is going to give you terrible skin advice as well. <laughs> it's going to tell you to wash with vinegar or something horrible. I don't know. So, <laughs> so, you know, having me as a resource is um, absolutely wonderful and helpful. Um, so one thing I always offer everyone is a free complimentary consult, one-on-one -on -one consult, 30, uh, 30 minutes. We can, you know, identify your skin type, discuss those concerns and conditions you want to work on. And, um, and share some natural solutions and how we could work further. As you can see, there's um, information on how to reach out and connect with me. Um, but I also wanted to share, I have an upcoming anti-aging class. It's a six-week course that's going to go from August 31st to um, October 5th, every Thursday, once a week. Um, one hour a week commitment. But I will be recording the session, so if you miss one, you can still get there. Um, there's a Facebook group and eBooks with recipes and notes. Um, but I also customize it for every single person. It's not just meet as a group, but we'll, you'll get two private sessions with me, um, a customized personal box of goodies that will have some things that we'll use for the class, but some things are specifically made for you. Um, and just, a much deeper dive into your skin health and wellness and how do you age gracefully 
Um, but there's going to be elements that are going to be teaching and aiding you along the way of more than just what our skin health is. There's going to be some support on an emotional level and, um, and other special little treats that will help, um, help you be able to embrace your natural beauty and shine. So I wanted to offer that to you. If you scan that QR code, it's going to get you right to the page to sign up for it. This is normally like an $800 value. I normally do it for 500, but because you guys are on the call, I will give it to you for 400 in the next 20, uh, 48 hours. So you have two days to figure it out, see if this might be the right fit for you. If it is, um, please um, fill that out or reach out to me and I am here to help you guys. Um, I'm going to stop the share and any questions. I'm